one of the things that I know a lot of concern has been raised when it comes to long-term antibiotics is with the antibiotic resistance. And I know that you elaborate on that in your book. Um, I wonder if you could comment on the subgroup of patients who come from areas of the world where antibiotic resistance is endemic. We see this yeah. in Australia, particularly from people from the subcontinent and Southeast Asia where they take a large number of antibiotics often over the counter um, for prolonged periods of their lives. And I think that they really throw up some big challenges for us here. Right, okay. So that that that, that resistance work that I described in the book, we, we, we've continued it further and we just submitted a, a paper to the International Urogynecological Conference in the autumn that, that demonstrates how we've normalized the antimicrobial resistance in our patient population. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, we used a control comparative group of patients who were coming off the street with a simple story of acute cystitis and had previously been entirely health, um, uh, healthy. And we obtained the cultures from those patients and measured the resistance. For the last two years, our patients have had the same resistance count as those patients, even though we're using long-term antibiotics. Now, that there's, there's good reason for this. Um, when you're, we, we, I'm well aware of the, the, the patients coming in from the, the, the uh, some of these other nations, and. Uh, uh, I do quite. A, uh, I, I'm, I have patients in India now and in Pakistan and uh, other related places. They're doing all right, actually. The thing is that the problem lies in this business of the use of cultures. Um, the cultures will isolate a microbe, and they will produce a, a resistance spectrum that is directly related to the previous antibiotic exposure and consumption. Now, it, 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 resistance becomes much clearer if you understand it from the evolutionary perspective. So we call antibiotics antibiotics because they, they come from bacteria and the bacteria use them to attack uh, competitors. But if, an, 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 if a bacterium produces an antibiotic, then it has to produce a resistance mechanism or it'll kill itself. So antibiotics evolve with resistance factors. Um, and the thing is that the microbes have got the capacity to turn them on and off depending upon their circumstances. So, so there's a misconception in the thought that the antibiotics we're giving are causing the evolution of resistance. I don't think that's the case. The, uh, the, the, the resistance has already existed there for millions of years. It's just exposure to the antibiotics causes the bugs to switch them on, the resistance factors. Now, if, if a resistance factor is switched on, that microbe has got to eat more to achieve the metabolism to produce the resistance factor. So if you remove the antibiotics from the environment, then, then Darwinian competition comes in and it is in the interest of those bacteria to switch off the resistance factor or they won't be able to compete with the mutualists then start uh, invading the population. So the first step is right we're going to stop everything and pause and just let the thing settle down and click 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 all over the place bugs will be switching off their resistance factors. Now a lot of these bugs have evolved to thrive in an environment where there are multi resistant, multiple different antibiotics slopping around. They're so highly specialized that in fact they can't compete with the natural mutualist or commensals that live inside our urinary tract. So if you remove that, um, that, that antibiotic uh, regime that causes an advantage for the highly resistant bugs, they, they, they tend to leave the population anyway. They're outcompeted. And so the, the, nowadays when people are coming, I mean, we get a lot of people who've been put through all sorts of 
cocktails over long periods of time, not just from the from Asia, but uh, um, also from the UK and so on. And now we've got a fixed rule that we, 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 we if we can, we stop all treatment for a period. If they can't cope with that notion, then we'll use methenamine for a period and just over about 12 weeks, just let it settle down. And it's astonishing how quickly the, 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 the sensitive strain starts coming up. So, so antimicrobial resistance can be uh, addressed by just not using these broad spectrum agents. <laughs>